When each and every step you take is on ground you've never stepped before, it's a satisfying and exciting feeling. Call it the need to explore, a defiant rejection of the 9 to 5 routine, or simply wanderlust. Many of us make it a point to regularly be somewhere we've never been before, to experience a foreign land and culture, and to allow oneself full immersion into that place is a remarkable experience. Some will claim travel is the best way to educate yourself, to grow as a person, and even truly find yourself in what makes you tick. It's an avenue to gain an understanding of somewhere that is simply not possible through the internet or television. So, how do we know what destination is right for us? Is there ever the right time in our lives to travel? And what are some strategies to get us where we want to go? Hey Calgary, I'm Kevin Chorney. Welcome to Calgary Now. Thanks for joining us tonight. As I'm sure you gathered, we're talking about travel. And I'm joined by a few lovely ladies here. Uh, first, start with you, Seema. Seema Dawan, am I? Yep. Forgive me, sometimes I struggle with the knives. Thanks uh, right. so much for being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're a travel writer and a reporter. Uh, you've got a passion for travel. Yeah, tell me a bit about you. Definitely, yeah. I'm a travel and lifestyle reporter. Um, I'm also the editor of Borderless Citizens which is a global magazine, or magazine for global citizens. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm reporting on different destinations, trends, um, topics related to that. Well-traveled, yes. seasons traveler, perfect, perfect. Yes. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Sheena, Sheena Rosentretter, you're from Kentucky Holidays. That's right. Uh, tell us about your role at Kentucky. Uh, well, Kentucky is the world's leading travel provider for 18 to 35 year olds. Cool. So I work for them here in Alberta. Yeah. Uh, and I help travelers find their dream destinations. And I work with our travel partners in the trade, like travel agents as well. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Uh, Seema, maybe I'll start with you. Uh, people subscribe to the belief that travel is a great way to, you know, quote unquote, find yourself. Is that the, the case in your opinion? And if so, how does that come to be? Um, I don't think any one thing can help you find yourself. It's sort of a life goal that you yeah, know people sure. have had for generations. But I do think that travel can help you just experience more things and get clarity on what you believe and you don't. Um, I think it's really healthy to see how different societies do things, how different people live, um, because when you're in just one destination, you know you think that's how everybody does things. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think it does add to your personal growth and potentially finding yourself. Potentially finding. Would you agree with that, Sheena? Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely does. I think travel can be pretty transformational. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen people that were shy totally come out of their shell. Yeah. I've seen people fall in love. I chose my career path based on it. Cool. Um, I just think that travel is something that, you know, when you get outside your personal comfort zone, you mm -hmm. really you get a chance to challenge yourself and see what you're capable of. And I think you learn not only about the destinations you go to, but, you know, about yourself and you kind of find what you can do. and. You find new personal interests that you might not yeah. have known about. Is travel for everyone? I think so, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, even a bad trip is a great trip. So uh, I do think travel is for everyone. The destination might, might be different. but A I bad think. trip is a great trip. But you still learn something from it. You okay. see a new place. Um, you may, even if it's as simple as never go here again, um, <laughs> I think there's, you know, or someone's helping yeah, you along yeah. the way. I do think it adds to. So a lot of it is about gaining knowledge then. I think so. I think we travel to get a better understanding of different cultures and different places. Yeah. Um, but you also get that understanding of, you know, I'm learning a new language or I'm trying to navigate myself around a city and I've never done that before. And you gain your own confidence. and The confidence, yeah. yeah. I, would, I would definitely have to agree. I think when you're faced with a situation where you are out of your comfort zone, you don't have the same avenues or resources available to you as you would at home, uh, confidence, of course, is going to come if you can sort that out. Now, if you can't sort it out, like you say, you're going to learn something one way or another exactly. regardless. Uh, as far as destinations, I mean, is there specific places that are more rewarding to visit, you think, when you're a bit younger, in your 20s and 30s, as opposed to when you're in your 50s or 60s? Well, I think it depends on the person. I think yeah. all areas are rewarding in their own sense. I think that Europe tends to be one of those places that you go when you're young because there's so many destinations all lumped together that Quite you can go and it, right? experience. Yeah. yeah, and you go from places like, you know, England where they speak English to you can jump between France and Spain and all these other countries where you're, you know, trying new things and it's yeah. very diverse from place to place. Um, but I really think it depends on the person. If you're looking for culture and history, maybe you want to go to Europe, maybe you want to go to Asia. If you're looking yeah. for adventure, maybe you want to go to Costa Rica. Places that you visited, Seema, in your 20s or 30s, of course, I won't assume you're in your 30s, forgive me. <laughs> the places that you visited maybe recently, is there some that stick out in your mind that you'd love to go back uh, when you are uh, significantly older and maybe others that you would probably forego visiting again? 
Definitely, yeah. I yeah. think there, uh, it would be very cool to go back to these destinations in 30 years and see how my perspective has changed. Um, I think South America, um, I was in Argentina last year and, uh, you know, it was a fascinating destination to see, but I was in hostels. It was a very, yeah. you know, budget-friendly trip. Um, so it would be nice to do it when I'm older and, you know, spending more on the trip and experience maybe more of the luxury uh, in the destination. I'm sure you would agree, though. There has, there's a character that's kind of gained from that. The sort of grassroots, not so luxury Definitely. accommodations. Definitely. Uh, do young people gravitate towards that, do you think? You know, I think it just depends. They want an experience, but it doesn't always have to be, you know, staying in a hostel to get that experience. It's how you interact with the mm -hmm. locals. It's, you know, whether you're willing to try new activities, yeah. those kind of things. So I think how you stay is more of a personal preference based on, you know, I've, I've done hostels, I've done five stars, I've done a mix. The gamut, and really. Yeah, cool. and I think more and more travelers are mixing up the type of travel, like mm -hmm. you say, you've done this, the same, but I think it comes down to what kind of person you are and the way that you interact locally. Is it important to travel early on in life? I mean, if you've got some time before, say, post-secondary education begins, is that an opportune time, do you think, to get away and, and see a place? I think so, if you can, um, because, you know, the older you get, I think you have more responsibilities, it's harder to get time off. Um, so I think it's a, you know, you're very lucky that you can take a longer time off. Um, so, yeah, and it also helps you decide, you know, career paths, um, learning how different people do things and maybe change your sure, mind. Sure, open your eyes a little bit. Yeah. That makes sense. We're going to jump to a quick break and check in with the Rant Pack folks. Stay with us. I firmly believe that travel should be on everyone's bucket list and uh, I mean whether you go to uh, you know exploring Canada, exploring the US, going internationally, I think uh, more people should do that and not the whole resort uh, traveling. I think you should try and do your best to fully immerse yourself into a culture. Uh, I've gone every year for the last three to uh, Europe and spent the summers there and uh, just going from country to country and it has contributed tremendously to who I am as an individual and who I am as a person and I think uh, everybody could learn a thing or two by stepping outside of their backyard. Obviously uh, Jay is a big proponent of travel, it makes sense, three months in Europe, past couple of years. Not so bad, really. Uh, can you really soak in culture? I mean, most of us are going to be able to get away for maybe a week or two at a time. Is that enough opportunity to really soak in and gain an understanding of the culture of a land that you're visiting? Of course, I think, think so? the, the second you, you know, step into a new place, you're in a new world and you're experiencing it. Um, of course, the longer you could stay, you could immerse yourself in different ways. Yeah. But sometimes it takes one conversation with a local or a really great meal to, you know, feel like you've experienced a, at least a part of the destination. Sort of part of that, uh, that pulse, I guess, of that land. Definitely. Kentucky runs tours that are, are how long? About, is it 10 days, two weeks? You know, we have a, a full gambit. We have trips as short as four days and okay. as long as 68 days in length and everything in between. So you can kind of choose how it fits your own personal schedule and get away and see as much or, you know, as little as you want to based on your schedule. Cool, cool. So like, what are some of the activities though that would be involved? Um, well, we take people to go see the major landmarks of each destination. Right. So whether you want to see the Colosseum or the Vatican, if you're in a place like Italy, um, if you're in Asia, we'll take you, you know, in Cambodia to see the top temples, those cool. kind of things. So yeah. all the must-sees. And right. then we give them a lot of opportunity to see some pretty unique things as well and have those experiences. Cool. Um, if you're in Austria, you're going to sightsee, but you could also have the opportunity to go uh, and do paragliding over the Alps or try a cooking oh, wow. lesson in Japan or a polo lesson uh, in Argentina. So have you personally experienced these different, I guess, excursions? Yeah, I mean, I've done a lot a of Kentucky trip. trips myself. Yeah. I do one a year, um, a lot of times just on my personal travel because I like them. Sure. Uh, and some of them are, you know, incredible. It, being in Italy, like you say, the food is one of the, the main reasons to be there, let alone the architecture Wine art. as well, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you had a chance to do some pasta making, which was pretty neat, oh, yeah. and cook it all from scratch. And really? for someone that can't cook at all, like mm -hmm. me, that was sure. quite an adventure in its own. So, Cool. Yeah, cool. great. It, it all sounds lovely. It sounds like a, a wonderful way to spend your money and your time. But uh, if you're traveling so frequently, which it sounds like you know both of you uh, obviously regularly do, time away from loved ones. Is it tough? I mean, what sacrifices are involved to, to really embrace travel in your lifestyle the way that, that both of you have? I mean, they'll start with you, Seema. 
Well, you definitely have to make it a priority because there are sacrifices involved. Um, I tend to travel with my family quite a bit, so oh, cool. um, being away is that not that big of an issue. But, you know, it's expensive. You have to schedule time off that you could be doing other things in. Um, and it's a lot of work. Uh, I think a lot of people forget that it's work. Even people who love travel occasionally hate travel, you know, when they're stressed about it or packing or something like that. So uh, there's definitely sacrifices. Same question. Is it, uh, can it be straining? Is it tough? Well, I think that... I don't know, it's not something I would ever give up because yeah. of the work with it. I think it's a lot more stressful when you're doing all of your own planning and that can take its toll and that's where, although I'll do some independent travel, something like a Kentucky is great because you don't have to do all that pre-research, you know, it's done for you, it's a lot yeah, of Yeah, that's a huge travel. selling feature, isn't it? It's great, I can pick up tomorrow and go somewhere and I know that I have a place to sleep and someone yeah. to show me the best sites and tell me the history. Um, and as far as family and, and that sort of thing goes, I mean, I travel with my husband quite often on them. Sometimes I go on my own and we both prioritize travel in our lives, so it's, cool. it's understandable. And even family, I mean, I took my three sisters to Spain last year, so we all got to travel together, which was great. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Good for you guys. I mean, what is it though? What drives us to want to travel? I mean, is it, uh, is it in our blood? I mean, our ancestors, a lot of them were, were nomads, always wanted to, you know, whether they wanted to or needed to, always on the move trying to find a new land. I mean, what is it within, I think, most of us that you think drives us to want to go and explore and see something new? I think it's a rush because it's an experience that sort of engages all your senses. You know, it's not like watching a movie where you're just watching something, you know. Um, the place is different, the food is different, the people are different, so it's just all encompass encompassing of, um, of the destination. Yeah. Um, so I think that's part of it. Um, a new routine, you know, getting out of the day-to-day -day 9 to 5 is also a yeah, refreshing yeah, break for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's an adventure. And I think people have curiosity, especially now with, you know, um, Instagram and Facebook and movies. Exactly. They see all these destinations and they want to go and explore them for themselves. And they can. So knowing that that's at their fingertips mm -hmm. is a bit of a temptation. Why not? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, what are some tips, though? Some big tips. Somebody who's not really a seasoned traveler, a young person, what do you think, through your experience, What's a few points that you can maybe let people know that would just help them along their way, whether it be uh, how to pack a bag more efficiently or how to get around, you know, that kind of thing. What are some of your biggest tips? Um, I think one of them is that people are scared to travel on their own and you shouldn't be. You know, I think if, if you want to go and explore a destination, you don't have to wait for your friends to go with you. Mm -hmm. You can go and it's not as scary as people think. Um, with our travelers, 50% of our travelers are female and 54% go solo. So I think that's something people really don't realize they can do is just go. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I didn't go on my first one until I was in my 20s because I didn't know I just could. Right. Um, right, sure. With packing, I mean, there's lots of tips we could give people from, you know, don't pack as much as you need, take half the clothes and twice the money. Yeah. Um, for girls, you know, it's don't always wear heels. Flats are good, especially <laughs> yeah, with, uh, yeah, with, you know, cobblestone sure. streets and such. Yeah. Um, but I think more than anything, it's important to go with a good attitude because if you have some money, your passport and a good attitude, you can buy everything else in destination if you need it and get mm -hmm. along just fine. My biggest tip is uh, whatever you do, don't go in the ocean with your passport in your pocket. It sounds like an experience. <laughs> it is definitely an <laughs> experience and it was, uh, it was a super headache and whatever. It was a good experience, like you said. You learn though, right? There you go. <laughs> How about yourself, Seema? What are some tips that you, that you could offer? Um, I think be prepared. Um, of course, you know, it's important to um, let go when you're in the destination, but Canada is one of the safest countries in the world and you don't realize how many things you have to worry about until you leave. Yeah. Um, so even if it's something simple as watching your stuff, uh, you're not used to doing that here. So be prepared, be alert. Um, have lots of money, have spare cash at all times. Don't keep it in the same place. Um, and sure, yeah, just possible. other than that, um, you know, just give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Take the yeah. plunge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to jump to another rant pack, folks. Stay with us. Travel is really, really important, and it's especially important for younger people because of the isolation that we can often become victims of when we don't travel. Uh, young minds being plastic and hungry for information uh, benefit greatly from traveling abroad and meeting people and understanding the similarities that humans have across the planet and the differences in culture that are not things that separate us but that make us interesting. The more we travel and the more that we understand the planet that we live on is a rock hurtling through space that we're not getting off of and we best understand each other and enjoy each other's similarities and differences and get along because otherwise we have war. So 
Travel.